Yamaha R3 review. Check it out. Hi guys, Mark here. Hope you're all well today and enjoying the uh, spring and summer weather that we've got now. Hope you're all out on your bikes, having a great time. Well, today we've got an amazing, beautiful Yamaha R3. Now, this is quite a requested bike by some of my subscribers. Um, you know, this is sort of a real, this category of bike is very good for those who want a sort of an intermediate stepping stone between, say, a 125 and, say, a, a bigger bike, you know, like a 600 or 700 or an 800. This would absolutely fit the bill, this, this, this category. And here in the UK, we have an A2 license restriction of 45 horsepower. So if you're on that A2 license, something like this is definitely worth a look. Um, in this category of, of bike, you know, you've got also the Ninja 400, uh, Kawasaki which I've got a review on check that out That's a similar sort of price and also if you're liking the sort of the naked theme um, Yamaha's brilliant MT-03 or the Kawasaki Z400 maybe even the uh, Honda CB300 but yeah very very good category this for sort of new riders who just want a bit more power than a 125 couple of years that you can step up to a bigger bike or even Experienced riders might go, go for something like this for, um, you know, just a cheaper option, just to sort of whiz around on. It's still great fun. So we're just going to whiz through the specs on this bike, and then we're going to go for a review and a ride on it, and um, we'll see how we get on. So this bike is coming in at uh, £5,299, and that's current in um, 2019. Um, as I say, it's A2 license compatible, coming in at 42 PS, which is about 40 horsepower at 10,000 revs. Okay, this, this, this is the newer model, and this comes with 37 millimeter inverted front forks, which look really nice there. And the whole bike is kind of looking, you know, quite similar to its bigger brother, the R6, with the vents in the tank there. You know, it really does look smart, and the front even looks very much like its bigger brother. So we've got a 321cc parallel twin, lovely little motor stuck up in there. As I said, producing around about 40 horsepower. We've got a 110 front tyre, and these are uh, Dunlop Sport Max. And we've got a 140 on the rear. Uh, nice thing with these bikes is they are quite small, relatively speaking, and quite light. And this comes in with a 780 millimeter seat height. So absolutely ideal for new riders. You don't want anything too tall or too heavy as a beginner. You know, spend a couple of years on a bike like this, get your skills up, and then you can progress to get something bigger and faster if you like. So this comes in also a 169 kilos wet, ready to ride. So it's not a heavy bike, it's quite small, so it's, it's just nice and easy to ride. Nothing's gonna kind of, you know, scare you or bite you too much. We have LED headlights on this bike, so it's a really smart looking front on it. Now, fuel tank size, quite small, 14 litres, but being just a 320cc engine, you should get at least 60 to a gallon from this. And giving you a range of about 120, 130 miles, I would say, before the, uh, the reserve light starts flashing at you, then you've got 4 litres or so left. A well, 6,000 mile service interval on these bikes so it's not going to have to spend ages in the dealership being serviced so there we go guys what do you think of that so this bike comes with a few tasty little extras we've got a Yamaha screen we've got frame sliders crash protection there a Krapovich exhaust seat cowl at the back there and a the tail tidy so it's nicely sort of jazzed up if you like so 
this is how yours could look if you put some bits on it. So let's just spend a few minutes walking around the bike, having a look at it in all its glory. Let's hop aboard, see what she's like. Well, first off, I'm very impressed. You know, this sort of like grating here and the vents on the side of the tank there, straight away you feel like you're on like a, a mini R6. Um, really, really nice here. I love the screen. The dash is very reminiscent of the R1 that I uh, took out a few weeks ago. So all in all, really nice. So let's talk about the uh, ergonomics of the bike. So it feels very, very light between the legs. My feet are flat to the floor and my knees are bent. And I've only got a 30 inch inside leg. I'm five foot seven. So if you're a small rider, 100% this bike's gonna be okay for you. Feels very, very light. Really nice dashboard here, LCD rev counter, gear indicator, miles an hour, fuel gauge, temperature gauge, all very basic, no electronic suspension, no rider modes. Um, it's got ABS as standard, that's now standard across the board in Europe. Um, no traction control, it's all pretty basic stuff, all your usual sort of hazards, kill switch, high and low beam, horn and turn signals. Very simple, really nice. So let's take this little beastie for a ride, see what she goes like. I say this kindly loaned to me by the guys at Crescent Yamaha here in Bournemouth in the south of England. So this has got a parallel twin, 320cc engine. So still plenty of power for a new rider to have fun on. Straight off, this bike is lovely and easy to ride. The clutch is deliciously light, brakes are nice and powerful, the riding position's nice, the gear change is nice. Everything is light and easy and straightforward to, to use, which is just what you want as a, as a new rider. So we just do the usual and work through the bike, talk about every single part of it, and then we'll have our final thoughts at the end, little walk around and tell you what I think. So obviously this has got an aftermarket screen on it, but to say it's really doing an excellent job of chucking the wind over my head. I say the great thing with these little bikes is because they're small with good handling, they're really good fun to chuck around the bends. You can have an awful lot of power, an awful lot of fun without too much power. That's exactly what this is all about, this sort of bike. Mirrors are pretty good. Um, I am seeing a fair view of my mirror, my arm, sorry, but I can still see behind pretty well. Now the dash, the LCD dash, is an absolute joy. Look straight into it, everything's very clear. Big, big speedometer, nice rev counter, top notch there, really good. Now the brake lever and the clutch lever, unfortunately, are non-adjustable. You do tend to find that on bikes like this built to a bit of a price. But that being said, they're set at, at a position where most people are going to find them okay. So no worries there, really. Just give this some power. Yes, the engine is very, very free revving. Being a parallel twin, 
It does like to rev. Maximum power is at about 10,000 revs, I believe. And you can tell that it's a twin. It's got a nice kind of throb to it, but it's pretty smooth. You shouldn't get any major numbness in any of your extremities. There's hardly any, um, let's get the revs up a bit, hardly any uh, vibrations through the bars and there's a tiny, tiny tingle through the foot pegs. Pretty much standard for a parallel twin. Now I do like the, uh, the bars and the riding position on this bike. They've put the clip-ons below the top yoke, different to sort of like the 2017, 2018 model I believe but it's still very, very comfortable um, and very upright. And as, as a new rider, you, you don't really want anything which is too sporty, too extreme, too radical, because you'll actually find it quite hard to control the bike, I think. And what you ideally want is something which is quite upright with nice wide bars to give you a good kind of control of the bike as a beginner. And this is top marks for that. It's got a semi-sporty position, so you feel really like you know you're like a mini rossi <laughs> but um it's a nice upright position with plenty of control so fantastic now the seat does feel quite firm but i don't think i've ever known a, a small bike fit me so well you sit right into it nice like nice leg position your legs are right into the tank and it is extremely comfortable so even though the seat is a bit on the firm side, as in it's not very plush like say a Versus 1000, <laughs> um, it doesn't feel uncomfortable in the slightest. I could quite easily ride this for, you know, a good 100, 100 miles or so, a couple of hours in the saddle. Give this some power. Yeah, it revs really nice. There we go, 7,000, 8,000 revs. Absolutely no complaints there whatsoever. It really does go well for a, a 320cc engine. So all the indicators and everything, very easy to find, straight to hand, I like that. So first gear into second, full throttle second gear. Whoa! Makes a nice little roar from its engine. So I, I hazard a guess top speed on this, you're all wondering aren't you? <laughs> it all depends on your weight and the conditions but 115 mile an hour I would say this would do on a good day, maybe a bit more on a perfect day if you're a small rider tucked right in. So yeah, around about 115 I would say, flat out, absolutely wringing its neck. This is absolutely brilliant round the corners. The uh, inverted upside down front forks, you can really feel them doing a, a good job. So riding position is really good for beginners. Engine smooth and punchy and very free revving. try and get past these cars. Let's try out its acceleration. Here we go, winder open. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> there we go. So yeah, you have to wind her open a bit to get past quickly, but she does do it. <laughs> yeah, road holding and the, uh, the feeling of the suspension uh, for an entry level bike, it feels really, really good. The blunt management is excellent. 
and the feedback especially from the front end is, is really nice if I had something like this when I was learning when I was 18 years old I would have been very very happy my first fast, fast bike was an RD350 YPVS I'll put a picture up there for you and uh, that was fast in its day two stroke but what you get these days is really nice yeah so far guys I'm I'm enjoying this little bike and even though it's small it feels very very stable and yeah, there's a bit of a crosswind coming across here now and it is absolutely no wobbling at all it feels very steady top marks for that so we're just trying the brakes out yeah obviously we've got single disc on the front nothing amazing but they're, they're more than adequate back brake is oh back brake's really strong The nice thing with the smaller engines with moderate power is you can really max them out, you know, you can tap right into them without getting yourself into too much trouble with the law. That felt really nice there, by the way, around that roundabout. Right, we're third gear now. 6,000 revs, winder open. 10,000 revs. Whoa. There we go, top gear. Yeah, very, very, very nippy is the best way I could describe it. Lots of fun. Right, let's just try the uh, low speed running of this. Say if you're going through town. Now, being a twin, I don't think it's going to like top gear at 30 miles an hour, but we try it out. Yeah, a little bit lumpy at 3,000 revs. F fifth gear, it's happier, but that's very smooth. No surging or hunting or anything. So yeah, low speed running's nice. Let's wind her open. Full throttle. There we go, 40, 50, 60, and it keeps on going. So you can see it's plenty quick enough. Now leg, leg position is um, quite sporty. Your legs are tucked up, but I can still move my leg up and down a good sort of six six inches so that you're not crouched right up with your legs so that's fine I do like the way your legs go into the tank and the whole the whole riding position the whole triangle of ergonomics feels absolutely spot on tiny bit lean forward not too much plenty of control through the bars So here we are doing 60, 6,000 revs, and it's generally very smooth. Yeah, that's quite impressive. So all in all, guys, this is a um, superb bit of kit. Um, I didn't know what to expect with this. I, I rode the Ninja 400 a few weeks ago, and that was a great bit of kit, but this is the same sort of money. And um, I have to say, I like this a little bit more. This just feels a bit more sporty, a bit more up together, a bit more refined, shall we say. There's not a lot in it, but I think I'm, my money would go on the Yamaha. The whole thing is just really nice and smooth, and easy to ride, but you've got that really nice precise handling around the bends and I'm sure you're going to ask um, can you tour on it well you could tour on any bike <laughs> but um, I think yeah you could you could do a hundred miles on this easily maybe 150 in a day without any problems at all
Yeah, lovely round the bend. It's because it's small and light, it's just really chuckable, instant response. Really good. And you could just wind it right open. Really have some fun. What an absolutely brilliant piece of kit. I say the thing with these bikes is they need to be easy to ride so that's the box tick for this and they've got to be fun and this is definitely fun here we go third gear flat out full throttle <laughs> it really makes you laugh it's great fun So, so I've been on this for about an hour now and uh, my backside, my bottom, is still absolutely fine. No aches or pains at all. So it is a, a nice bike comfort-wise. Gearbox, guys, is very, very slick and very easy to go up and down the gearbox. Very slick, very positive, very light as well and the clutch is nice and light and it bites at about halfway out let me just try that yeah about halfway is it's biting let's try that again yeah and it goes into neutral super duper easy that's good well that is really really good super impressed with that so light <laughs> So just to go over again, guys, I'm sat right into this bike, legs are tucked up and it's a, just a really nice riding position. I mean, if you're taller than me, five foot seven, I think you're still going to be okay on it. If you're six foot plus, you're going to look a bit big on it maybe, but you can still still ride it. But I think it's a sort of bike for sort of smaller riders to mid-sized people really. And uh, it's nice to get your feet flat to the floor. It instills confidence for new riders to be able to push your bike around, to be able to wheel it back and that sort of thing. You know, last thing you want on a bike as a beginner is to feel kind of nervous. So, there we go. Go on then, we'll do a noise test, but it it's not going to be an R1, I'm afraid. <laughs> So it's a parallel twin, so it, it sounds a bit chuggy, but here we go. Alright, let's just try pushing it around. Should be pretty straightforward. Oh, so light. Forwards, easy. Back, absolutely. It's like a heavy 125. So absolutely first class so guys I hope you enjoyed that that really is a cracking little sports um, first timer bike if you're in the market for one of these this style of bike definitely get yourself a test ride on one of these um, try out the Ninja 400 as well that's the same um, same sort of price but that's a bigger engine bit more torque tiny bit more power but as I said I just prefer this I think just because it just feels that bit better in the handling I think yeah and it, I just really like the looks of it so anyway guys if you like this bike please give me a thumbs up please uh, subscribe and please share and I'll catch you all again soon and please post your comments I always like to hear them hear from you and I'll reply to as many as I can so this is Mark signing off and I'll catch you all again guys cheers all the best bye bye